Okay, uh, as you already know, the modern, the current Kanteles, Kantele family in Finland is very uh, variative. So there are lots of uh, different Kanteles, di different shapes, hundreds of different models from five string to 40 string Kantele, concert Kanteles. So uh, now I will uh, show you some key features from the 19th century hollow cantiles, which are no longer in common use. Mm -hmm. Roughly spoken, there are two types of hollow cantiles in Finnish Karelian area that have been found. But it's very rough, rough uh, div uh, division. You can say that uh, there is a northern type when the instrument is hollowed out from below and there is no bottom. And then the western type, uh, no, 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 southern type, sorry, southern type when it's hollowed out from the top and a separate top plate is put on it. So this is uh, southern, and this is northern. And some some researchers have suggested that the border between the northern and the southern uh, types or models would go somewhat somewhat along uh, the borderline of the Treaty of Pakinasari. Uh, but you don't need to. It was uh, Nörtebori earlier, but nowadays it's Petrokrepost. You must know the place. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, it was when uh, Sweden uh, Sweden started to invade the Western Finland during the 13th century. Sweden came from here, and they came all the way through Vibori, where they built the castle. And Novgorod, uh, it had an ally alliance with uh, Karelians earlier, but on the 13th century they, they invaded the Karelia area. Novgorod invaded. So this borderline, Pähkinäsaar and Rauha in Finnish, in, in English it's uh, the Treaty of Nöteborg. And, and the place nowadays is Petrokrepos in, in Russia. So the Treaty of Pähkinäsaari was made between Sweden and Novgorod in three, uh, 1323. And it is estimated to go here, this part, through the Karelian Isthmus, this is very uh, strict, it is very well known. But the northern parts of the border is not so uh, strict. Mm -hmm. So it has been thought that the northern part, this area, was controlled by both Sweden and Novgorod. To, to, uh, so it is not true that the, uh, okay, this borderline created a cultural borderline. So in Finland at the moment, nowadays, we have the Eastern culture and the Western culture inside Finland. And the health, even the health authorities say that this borderline can be seen nowadays in Finnish people in Ill illnesses. Eastern people have different illnesses than Western people. <laughs> I, I belong to Eastern people. My genes are in, in the East. So I, 
I, um, okay. And but this these candles, this is not true with these candles because we can see this northern candles. This is from northern Ostrobothnia, and it is uh, about this area. This candle from uh, 1893. This is the northern type. Northern model, right? It is from this area, northern Ostrobotnia. Okay? And this one, 1833. This is from Vienna Karelia, from here. And, and this area, people were very uh, strongly connected each other at that time. They traveled this route a lot. Uh -huh. They were traveling, and, and the Vienna Karelia people were originating from Western Finland. They moved during the 16th and 17th century, the families to Vienna Karelia. And this southern type, which is hollowed out from the top, you can find from border Karelia and Latoka Karelia, as well as from, from the southern uh, Finland. So it's on the eastern side of the Pähkinäsaari Treaty uh, border again. This also this southern type. You get it? So it doesn't go along to that border. This candle can be found from this region. Border Karelia and Latoka Karelia, also here, Finland. So, so it's more north and south, not like this so much, okay? Like west and east, but north and south, yes. Okay, good, 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 good. So I have uh, three examples from the National Museum of Finland. Uh, this is the code for the museum. Uh, these are the names of the places. And this is, this is the building year when the instrument was built. So, uh, two of them are a uh, southern type, and this one is northern type, hollowed out from below. These are hollowed out from the top. Okay? Okay? So, the first one, this one, Ruskella Ilomansi. It is. Here goes the current Finnish eastern border. This is the current eastern uh, fi Finnish border. So Ilomansi is in the uh, Finnish side of the border, somewhere over here. The first cantile is from there. It was bought in there, but it was built on the eastern side of the current border in, in Ruskela in 1860. So it was built in Ruskela, but it was in Ilomansi. Uh, it was bought from Nilo Suihko, the player who played it was Nilo Suihko and he lived in Ilomansi. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, let's go a little bit backwards, sorry. I, I will mention again that 
The all, from all of this, you can see the typical features of Finnish cantelets is this ponzi. Each of these instruments have this ponzi. So it's very typical for Finnish hollow cantelets, this ponzi part. And then this irregular shape, that four corners, And it's irregular, like this, yes, okay. And very often you have this kierukka, uh, this round part in the edge. But this one is cut, it's, it's blunt, so it actually it has five corners. No, it was originally made like that, yes, it was cut. So it's actually, it has five, it is, what is it? Five, five corner polygon. All wooden tunifex and mostly in archives, we can find that mostly during the 19th century, the string material was brass. Yes, and, and most of the instruments were more than they were bigger than five string candles. And old people said that in the beginning, beginning of the 19th century, there would have been five string candles also. Okay. Also, the, uh, this varras, this uh, metal bar, is very typical. In, yes, it's called varras in Finnish. So the typical features are ponzi, varras, the irregular shape, carrying uh, kierukka, and wooden tunipex and brass strings. Yes. Okay. Um, so this was bought in Ilomansi by Axel August Borenius. Borenius in 1877, he made his fourth collection trip. He was a, a folklorist and he tr made travels and collected items and uh, songs. And this was his fourth and the largest trip, he started it from, from Ingria and Estonia, Setuland in, in the summer. Then he went to northern, Finnish Northern Karelia, to Vienna Karelia, and then to Aunus, and then to Border Karelia. So he made a huge trip and collected lots of material. 372, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, he collected lots of, and this is, this is from him. So, uh, the, this is uh, the speciality in this candela is that the top plate is curving. This is curved. This is kind of special. It's, cur it's curved from this part. So the, you can see the shape, curved shape of the top plate. Okay, and the man, Neil Suhko, at that time it was very normal that from this area there were lots of canteles. It was said that every cantele, every house has a cantele. Neil Suhko had three canteles. Five string cantele. Seven string candle and this uh, twelve string candle. Uh, no, no, no. This this one has thirteen. Thirteen, I think. Yes. This is this is thirteen string candle. The other two are twelve string. This is thirteen. And Borenius wrote down this kind of scale. 
for this instrument. It was easy for him to write it in C, but it was in A major. Okay, but the old man used only the high strings, so his tonic, he, his tonic was over here. Like in his seven string cantele, it was in minor. This is the tonic. Five, first five tones from the minor scale, then the seventh scale decree below the tonic, and then the fifth, the sixth was missing. And in the same way, even though he had the bigger cantele, he used only the high strings to get the minor scale from here. And either he didn't use this, or if he used this sixth scale decree, it would have been Dorian. Sorry, yeah, Dorian. And we have uh, information from uh, the Border Karelia players from the beginning of the 20th century that, that they used modes. There was Mixolydian, Dorian, Lydian, and also, and also neutral thirds. Neutral, neutrally. It, it was the same in singing when they sang the runo songs. The third, the, the third was it. It could be on on different level. Yeah. Okay. So you can see here how the tuning peg is slit to get the string attached. The shape of the tu tuning pegs differ in different cantiles a lot. And, and this cantile had that kind of uh, shape. Then the uh, ponzi is very thick here in this cantile. The heart, the heart would. Is it hardwood? Yes. The hardwood is almost in the middle of the ponce. This is the hardwood of the, the... It's almost in the middle of the ponce. Uh, the corner, so this side and these sides are beveled. So they are, they are not like um, this, but they are like this. It had brass strings, and the knot is under the metal bar, below the metal. So the knot of the string is under the metal bar, beneath the metal bar. Yeah, okay. I don't know Russian This knot of the string is under the metal bar. It's very useful. The knot of the of the string is under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's very normal, normal way of attaching the string. Yo, and, and and the top, uh -huh, and the top plate was fastened with a couple of big iron nails. And also you can see some small, um, this is a wooden uh, nail kind of, you can see. Yeah. 
And then uh, the one thing also important here uh, is that the uh, top plate comes on the side. It comes on the side, like in the next candle, it will be inside the frame, but now it's on. Yes. And the surface is uh, blackened by smoke. Because at that time, people earlier on during the 19th century, Finnish people, rural people, uh, that lived in isolated villages, some of them were still living in smoke houses. They didn't have chimneys. Mm -hmm. No, no. But because the, in the instruments were hanging on the wall of the room, and when they heated the room, the smoke made it black. Yeah. So this is, this is, smoked in smoke sauna, because this is a replica. <laughs> this is made black by smoke, in smoke sauna. Because it's a replica. <laughs> it's a copy. <laughs> okay. And the other one, other south, the other southern cantele was uh, both in uh, Korpiselka, Ristisalmi. I will show you the map from the map where it is. It is from this area. At the moment, it is on the Russian side, but before the wars, it was the Finnish area. But nowadays, it's just by the border. It, it's Korpiselka. So it's, uh, yeah, it's just by the border. And it's, it's the southern type again. And here is the man who played it. He's Hilpa Vornanen. And uh, he made the kantele, he had made the kantele himself. Here's the man. And his son, Antero Vornanen, became a very famous Finnish kantele player later. So th this is his son. This was a very, Vornanen uh, family was very famous for hunters and runa singers and kantele players. It was a very famous family for that. This photo is taken by uh, Väisänen, Armas Otto Väisänen, the famous Finnish uh, folklorist who met Hilpa in 1916. And Antero Vornanen said that, sorry, sorry, Antero, the son, said that his father, his father had told that uh, you should, you should get from the pine, to, uh, because this candle was made of pine. The, uh, pine and spruce were this south. Uh, spruce is like a fur. It's a soft food or spruce. Like a Christmas tree. Christmas tree. No, 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 no. Pine, pine is, um, pine and spruce. Can you translate the difference? No, you can't. Anyway, trees with needles, pines, and, and spruce. Okay, so he said that, uh, Hilpa had said that when you want to get a cantele, uh, uh, um, wood for cantele, you, you will take a um, straight, not free section that doesn't have branches, not a straight, not free section from a pine between two branches. So here's a branch and here a branch and you take the wood. Yeah, and not, 
not the basil tree, because that is not good. You have to take it from the higher. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, these, both of these southern candeles are made of this uh, soft wood, like pine or spruce. And um, Väisänen uh, wrote down from Hilppa two songs. There is the scale. It was in E flat, but here it is transposed in D. So it's like a major scale, and on the high strings, the seventh scale degree is missing, and that was that is very typical. Be because they didn't use that tone in their music. And on the lower strings, this is the tonic, so it's a one, two, three, four, five, sixth string from the low is the tonic here. And then seventh, sixth, fifth scale degree, and then the lowest one is the low octave, tonic, tonic, and the second scale degree. First, second, fifth, sixth, seventh, first, yeah. And uh, this is a typical dance tune from that era. Like Ripatska, it came from Russia. Oh, Rissakka, Prisatka, Prisonka, Maanitus, all those names. But it came, it's a Russian dance that was very famous at that time. People danced it. And Kantele players also played it. And it is, uh, it is written down in a paradigmatic way here. So this is the beginning, but this is the A phrase. He could repeat it uh, how he wished. For example, three times, four times, with different variations. Then when he wanted to go forward, came this. Then this is th this is the bridge, phrase B, to C. One, two, three, four beats. One, two, three, four beats. But one, two, three, four, five beats. In C phrase, you have five beats. So, and then he repeated this as he wanted, and then he went back to A. So the, the length of the phrase was changing. At the four bits, and then five bits, and then back to four bits. You can see the shape that the sides are a li little curved. They are not straight. Mm -hmm. They are sh like this. This, it's not straight. Uh, and the top plate is embedded inside the box. Now it's embed in, embedded inside the box, the sides. And then you can see here that the uh, top, from this, from this uh, top side, the box, sound box is much higher than from this side. So it, it, it grows in height. And that is very typical also. You can see it in here. It happens here also. That is normal.
okay? And then uh, this is not so uh, frequent that we find this metal bar, which you have quite often. We, we can find it in some candles, but uh, more, more candles don't have it. Most of, most of the candles don't have it. Hmm. Yeah, but some, some, in some candles it is, yes. And here you can see that the string is going uh, through this corner. It doesn't touch this corner at all. It goes, it touches this side alone. So it's, it's a sharp corner. And again, the tuning, and again, the tuning peg is slit. That's how you put the string. It had steel strings, but it may be steel. But it may be because of the son who made big candles and he found the steel strings and thought that they were better. So it may be that the son had changed the strings. The tuning peg is very beautiful, drop shape. Uh, the knot of the string is again under the, the barras. The metal bar. Yeah, and and this uh, tip of the sound box is round. This is special shape. And then you can also see that the sound box uh, is like this. So it's like this, and then like this. These are special features. And he had his uh, carved his name and the year. And the, the top plate was fastened with small wooden uh, nails, wooden nails, yes. Here you can see the hole, but it was it was uh, departed, it was not fastened anymore. Along the years it was departed, so I was able to take it away. <laughs> so, so I was able to take it away, and here you can see how it is carved from the top. And here is the frame inside which the top plate comes. And you can see that the, this is the top side, so it's smoked, it's blacked, it's black by the smoke, but beneath it's not. And again, the heart of the wood, the heart wood, is, is in the middle of the Ponzi, and that may be the reason why there is this crack because it comes from the hardwood. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the northern type. It is from Pielisjärvi, from this area. So it's uh, current North Karelia, Finland. Mm. So the Western culture reached these areas earlier than the border Karelia areas. At the time, at the time in the beginning of the 20th century, when these people were still inside the Runozon culture, these people were already dancing waltzes and polkas and so on. And although this is this is a question for you. And you can comment it and think about it. But there was one, Armas Otto Weisenen wrote 
that this mod, uh, northern type, which is hollowed on, out from below, this type, would be oldest type of making the instrument. Older than this one. Weizenen, yes, yes. I don't know. I I don't know about. We don't know. What do you think? It's a very difficult question. We can't know, but at least this type, even though this is hollowed out from below, it has twelve strings, and it's so-called northern type, right? But it has somewhat the Western in, in impact in it, because you can see the irregular shape has vanished. The irregular shape, it, it's almost like this, the shape. It's almost like this, it's not like this. Any. It, it's more like the shape, right, right. Yeah. But it's anyway, it's hollowed out from below, and here you can see again, like in the in the previous one, when ah, where the here you can see that the sh when the shape of the inside of the box is five has five corners because the, of the plant tip, it has five corners. So the same is here when it's hollowed out from below. Row. One, two, three, four, and five. So it's the same shape here. Yes, yes, plant tip. Yeah. Uh, this was built in 1840 by a half blind man. In he was half blind. And. For a Lutheran pastor, he bought it, yes, and he and the pastor gave uh, later from the pastor it went to the museum. The pastor did not make it he bought it. He bought it from this half blind, half blind man who was who was a common man. So the pastor bought the instrument from the common man, yes, from the blind man, for himself. And that's why we can see that because the pastor was Lutheran, he, he wrote beneath the strings, the names of the strings, the scale, and the string numbers. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and so on. C, D, E, F, G, so it's in C major, and the tonic is on the lowest string. Which the, uh, which the folk musician would have never done. Okay, here's the a special shape of the ponzi. It's very long, very thin, and very curved. It's special. These corners are beveled, so it's like this. And also the tip, the end is like this arrow. Again, the knots are under the metal bar, the same way of putting the strings. The shape of the tuning peg is like a diamond, and the tuning peg is split again. How, that's how you put the strings. And then there is a small round end on, in the tip of the. Yes, it's called kierukka in Finnish. I don't know how you say it. In Finnish, it's kierukka. It's like coil. I don't know, coil, kierukka. It's the Finnish name for that part of the kantele. Okay, good. That's a good name. So the, those were the instruments. And then uh, here are just a few examples of the scales that have been written down. 
of the time from those instruments? So from that area where the previous cantele was bought from uh, Pielisjärvi, the previous cantele, it was it, the cantele was bought in 1840. But uh, um, Axel August Borenius, I told you before, in 1877, the researcher who collected uh, songs, he visited Pielisjärvi in 1877, and he wrote down these scales. Here he he's again, he has written it in C, because it would be easier to write it in C, but he wrote, oh, oh, oh actually, it was in Cis, he wrote there, C sharp or D flat, whatever. But here you can see the fingering. So this is the right hand and this is the left hand. It is like this, the playing position. <laughs> and this is for the smaller candela. That's how he said the older. And here is also one fingering. So this is the right hand and this is the left hand. Maybe he was left-handed, okay? And then Väisänen, for example, in Suojärvi, which is border Karelia, now on the Russian side, in 1917, he wrote down from Jakob Kul, you old player, this kind of scale where you have, this is the tonic. So it is kind of uh, mixolydian, but the sixth is neutral, neutral, and he could he had this big candle with 16 strings. He played it with the old technique and he could change the hand position so that the tonic would come here. He would lift the hands like this. So he would get a different scale and now the third is neutral. And that can also f be found from other players that there is a different tuning on the higher strings than on the lower strings of the instrument. So you can just change the hand position to get a different scale. Yep. And, and, the, and the normal way to tune was to use fifths and octaves. So, for example, here, uh, Pesa Patronen, he had a D flat mix of um, Lydian, no, no, Lydian, this is Lydian scale, and the tonic was D flat. Lydian scale. So, it's very easy to get Lydian when you do use fifths to tune. Okay, and then there was this old man Fed Jahappo in Suojärvi in 1917. He had also a bigger cantele, but he only used five strings at the time. He never used more than five strings. But then he changed the hands position to get different scales. And he continued the same tune on a different position with different, on different scale. You get it? Okay. The, 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 uh, there's nothing, but these are just the scale, different scales that have been, have been written down. So this is like a uh, natural minor, but, but there is this uh, neutral third again. F mixolydian. And here is a neutral sixth. And he had, I think he had, oh yes, neutral third also. Neutral third, yes. And very often the seventh scale degree is missing from, uh, from the high strings. Yeah. 
Anything familiar? Anything familiar for you? In this? Mixolydian, like yes, yes, yes. He personally he does this, but he doesn't know someone has done this. He just by himself is yeah. doing sometimes. Yeah, but it's very easy to get these modes if you tune with fifths. It's very easy to have mixolydian or lydian or. Yeah. Any question? That was it. Any questions? Как, как, как они называли да, вот, э, этот строй? Дело в том, что мы же ну, народные музыканты, да, мы да, да, да. вот, в русских временах говорили, что по песне, если вот песня получается, да. ну, как, как бы, вот и все. То есть они никогда не говорили да. Да, не сидиски, а как угу. они нас специально помнят. Да, 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 я тоже не хотела этого сказать. Вопрос у нас, village people did not know about the Greek sales. How did they name the scales? How, how did they, do they have some kind of terminology for the tune? That is a very good question. But as far as I know, we have the information from Väisänen. From 19th, uh, Armas Otto Väisänen visited these Karelian villages in 1916 and 1917. That's the most of the information we have because he wrote down all the information of scales and fingerings and so on. And we have no information from him, him that the uh, village people would have had any names for the scales. They knew when it was correct and they could change the scale. They could use mixolydian and, and uh, major, for example, uh, one player had the scale in Mixolydian, and then Väisänen had commented him that your seventh, seventh uh, uh, scale degree is low. Why? Then he raised it, the player, because he was commented about it. So, but uh, but he could use both, and they could. They said that it's it's the same song. It's it's like playing the same song, even they though they changed the scale to different scale. So they kind of just perhaps wanted to make different m moods or whatever, but they didn't have any names for it. As far they said that now it's correct and now it's not correct, but no names as far as we know. Низкий, а он тогда поднял и, и уже с выше тоже играл. И иногда, когда они перемещали руки, тоже менялась тонация и, и ну, настроение музыки, но они играли ту же песню, ну, просто, наверное, ну, как сказать, на другом настроении. So, yeah. At least we, we don't have any information about the names that they would have. But they didn't have any names for the music either. I mean, they, they, of course, they, if they were accompanying dances, that's the different, different because they, okay, now you dance this dance, now you ask Prisatka, let's play Prisakta, of course. But, but for everything else, they didn't have names for music because... 
it was so normal part of their life. People were singing about everything, ab about uh, how, what they were doing, and, and making music was so elementary part of life. They didn't, they didn't say that they are making music, <laughs> because it was like living. It's, it's a very different culture. So for us, we, we, we make the separations. So now I make music and now I play with, but they didn't separate it in, in my mind. But we don't know. Hmm. We have the same problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and how to, when we have this, these documents of music, for example, Weizen and wonderful transcriptions, amazing, amazing dis, dis, uh, transcriptions of the music, but they are written down on, with notes, which is for, developed for Western music. Note transcription, right? Yes. And these people had no idea what does, what is F, what is Mixolydian, what is made. So they had no idea. And they just made music. So now we, who don't, we can't hear this music anywhere. No, they are all dead, 100 years ago. And now we try to interpret the music from the sheet music, from those notes, with our Western music culture knowledge. How can we, how can we find the original music behind that? It's a big question. Mm. But it's good to know the problem, right? Because then we can at least be a little, um, yes, yeah, that, that, okay. I'm not sure how this sounds. <laughs> I know the notes, but I don't, I'm not sure how it should sound. <laughs> you will comment later. Yes, good. Because yes, yes. But it's 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 an elementary question of the whole topic. How do we find the music behind all this theory? The original music. Where is the music? Mm. We have some phonographic recordings from nine, from Weizen in 1916 and 1917 from these players. But they are in terrible condition. That <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm ready. I'm sorry if it took too long. I'm ready. We will change. We have no timetable. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good.